What's up everybody and welcome to another RX480 video. Now I've owned the card for about 5 days now and I just wanted to give you guys my initial impressions as well as a little comparison against some of the other cards I've owned such as this R9 290 here and uh, the 290X. Now I will throw in a couple of other cards that um, I've used for builds for other people and also uh, one little benchmark for my friend's GTX 980 but I'll go ahead and get to that later so first things first we have the RX 480 here now originally I was kinda concerned with the, the shoddy packaging from Vision Tech but the cards okay it works fine um, the video is cringeworthy I'm sure uh, just me shaking the box but I mean the, the packaging itself is pretty cringeworthy but it's okay, and honestly, I've always said, like, why don't they go a little bit cheaper on the packaging sometimes to lower the price of the card? Um, I, well, Vision Tech succeeded there, but I would definitely would have liked to see them uh, secure the card better because it was completely loose in the box. Um, as I was saying, though, the card is completely fine. The biggest difference with the RX 480 compared to the 290 and 290X that I have here is the, the power pins. As you can see, the RX 480 takes a single 6-pin, while the reference 290 and 290X have a 6 and 8-pin connector. Unfortunately, though, I really wish that AMD would have went with a single 8-pin, because this, car seems, this card seems to be power-limited. Now, in terms of overclocking, I was able to get this up to 1360 for benchmarks such as 3D Mark. However, it was not stable um, for gaming. So I ended up having to lower it to um, 1320 on the core and 2100 megahertz on the memory. That's where I felt that's where I felt safe. Uh, I was using AMD's Wattman utility, which is nice. It doesn't uh, really let you increase the voltage as much as Afterburner, but then again, these cards you really can't draw too much more power than what they do from the factory. After all, there is that whole fiasco going on right now about these cars drawing too much power from the PCI lane. Now, I haven't had any issues. Um, my motherboard's fine. It's still working. I haven't had it crash. Uh, I don't know if it's drawing more. I'm not measuring that. But this card is definitely more efficient than the 290 that I am comparing it to and the 290X as well. So this card measures in at 11.25 inches, which is shorter than the 290X, if I put it back here. This is a, a 290, but it's just the same cooler. And then uh, just recently I put the Sapphire Triax cooler on my reference 290X, so it's the reference PCB. The original Sapphire 290X Triax was a reference PCB, but then they have a revision which uses their own custom PCB. So, I mean, this is basically the same as a uh, revision one or the original Triax. Now as you'll see this is the shortest one by about an inch compared to the 290 and um, maybe an inch and a half compared to the Sapphire Triax cooler. Now in terms of noise for overclocking I set the fans to maximum on all of these and the RX480 slide right in between the reference R9 290 and the Triax 290X as you can see here by the graph. So pretty close overall. Honestly, I would think it comes down to what pitch you want. I would describe the RX 480 as kind of a hair dryer, while the 290 was a vacuum, and the Sapphire Cooler is kind of hard to explain. It was almost like a, a tornado warning, I guess. But I would definitely say the, the RX 480 is much more bearable than the 290 in terms of noise. Uh, it's just a much calmer sound and uh, even though it was only a couple of decibels quieter it really it really didn't seem that loud and without my overclock on I actually really couldn't hear the card that much. But um, I went ahead and did some benchmarks now. Uh, you'll notice that there's various overclocks for the different games. I haven't quite finalized them yet. For the most part on the RX 480 I ran 2100 megahertz on the memory and 1320 on the core just because that's where I felt safe. 
Um, like I said, I did manage to do a 3D mark run at 1360, and uh, it actually came in right behind the GTX 980, as you'll see here. Now that was my friend's EVGA GTX 980 super clocked, and he paired that with a 4790K. It's not overclocked, and, but he got a score of 1433, and you'll see right behind that, the RX 480 came in at 13,940, which honestly isn't too bad. I was able to overclock it a little bit more and squeeze out some extra performance and actually beat the 980 score by one point, but that realistically wasn't stable for gaming. So I just went ahead and put the score in the graph. But one thing that's interesting here is that you'll see that that score of 13940 is faster than both my R9290 Tri-X and my R9290. Um, which I found interesting. Now that didn't exactly correlate to game performance, but I've only tested a couple of games and more tests definitely need to be done. With that being said though, let's go ahead and jump into Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now I went ahead and included my Sapphire R9 Fury. I no longer have this card with me, so I can't really compare apples to apples and overclock it. But um, the card was unlocked, so basically it was a Fury X with a air cooler on it. But I'm not 100% certain, so I just called it a Fury in the graphs because that's technically what it was. And as you'll see, that, that scored on the top. But what's interesting here is we see the RX 480, and it's actually beating out the 290X overclock and the 290, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about Dirt 3. Here you'll see just the 480 and the 290s, because like I said, the, the 980 is my friend's card, and I don't have the Fury anymore. I, I sold that just before picking up the 290X, and then this 290 is actually for a, another build that you guys will see on my channel soon, hopefully. But here we actually see the RX 480 fall to the back of the pack, and I'm really not sure why this happened. I actually reran the test just to verify that these re results were indeed accurate. This was ran on max settings at 1080p, and you can see here that the both the R9290 and the 290X are faster than the RX 480 by quite a significant margin. And this will continue on to the Steam VR benchmark. Here we can see that the RX 480 uh, pretty much gets destroyed by the R9 290 and the 290X. And I think that has to do with resolution scaling. If you look at some of the reviews from the other, other reviewers, you will see that the RX 480 does not scale very well as the resolution increases, whereas the 290 and 290X do. And I think that's largely to blame for that. And this is kind of unfortunate because VR is really what this card was targeted for. But it's clear based on the Steam VR benchmark that the 290 and 290X are a much better option for VR. Or even the 390 and 390X, those are the same cards. But yeah, so there's a pretty big difference there. I tried overclocking the RX 480 a little bit more to the point where it wasn't really stable for games, but it would complete the benchmark, and I was able to get a score of 7.2, which isn't bad. I mean, it's definitely acceptable for VR, but it's still a uh, far cry short from the R9 290 and even the 290X. And at the top of this, of course, you'll see my Tri-X Fury. So if you want to do VR, I would say you if you would probably want to go for the older 290 or 290X because you can find those used pretty cheap now that the RX 480 is out. But also the GTX 1070 is available for only about $100 more, depending on which model you get. And honestly, that is also a great bang for the buck card, and I would highly consider it. Alright, so my initial impressions on this card are, for the price, it's really not bad. I would pick one up, I would use it. Um, I've been using it in my system, I haven't bothered to put the 290X or 290 back in, other than for running these benchmarks for comparison's sake. I couldn't really tell a difference, it hasn't had any issues playing uh, modern games at 1080p. Uh, just cause 3, I did turn up all the settings all the way, and I did notice it was dropping into the high 40s at times, which is kind of an issue. But, I mean, turning down a couple of settings would have restored at 60, 
for the price, you really can't go wrong. It's low on power. It's a great card. But if you have a little bit more money in your pocket, I would go for the 1070. Or I would shop around on Craigslist and try to find a 290X or 290 if you're okay with the heat and the extra power that those bring along with it. You can even find them a little bit cheaper than $200 now, making them a great buy. Um, not to diss the RS, the RX 480 at all, though. This is a, a great card. I personally would wait for uh, the AIBs to come out with custom coolers uh, and really see what this can do. If if we can overclock it more, which honestly I, I would expect this to be able to hit 1400 MHz with a, a better power design. Uh, but then again, the Fury, I always thought you'd be able to overclock that more once we got voltage control, and that was not the case. But I have hope for this card, and if it overclocks to over 1400 MHz, and this could be a serious competitor against the GTX 980. Uh, but as for right now, I would say it's kind of right in between the R9 290 and 290X in terms of performance. So if you have uh, something such as a GTX 970 or an R9 290 or 290X or 390, 390X, all the same, um, I definitely would not upgrade to this. However, if you're rocking like an old 7950, 7970, this wouldn't be a bad card to consider, especially the 8 gigabyte variant that will allow it to be more future proof as they say. Um, as of right now though, there's really not too many games that are going to take advantage of the 8 gigabytes of VRAM. In my experience, I haven't been able to exceed 4 on this card. Um, ex even Forza Motorsport 6 Apex, which won't allow you to enable ultra settings unless you have more than 6 gigs of VRAM, didn't use more than 4 in my testing. But it's nice to be able to crank up those settings on games that don't allow you to do it without the extra VRAM. So that's nice, and it kind of gives you peace of mind. So now if you're shopping around for a new card, I, I might consider the RX 480 over, say, 290 or 290X just for that reason alone. However, if there's a 390 or 390X for a comparable price, I think I would have to recommend going with the 390 or 390X at this time, at least until the custom coolers for this card come out. And I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, just in a quick summary from my experience, because this is kind of an initial impression video. It's really not a bad card. I wasn't, I wasn't blown away. I wasn't disappointed either. I would recommend this card, unlike the Fury. I did purchase the Fury, and I was very disappointed by that. Yes, it's a fast card. It's a lot faster than this. But for the price, I don't think it was worth it, especially when you have the GTX 980 and 980 Ti. Now, obviously, all those cards are irrelevant thanks to the 1070, but um, this card does get my approval. And if you can't afford the 1070, then I wouldn't hesitate to pick one of these up. Um, and that pretty much concludes this video. Thanks for watching.